Ben shall die. Their names are pricked. Your brother too must die. Consent, you love this? I do consent. Prick him down, Antony. Upon condition, Proclus shall not live, who is your sister's son, Mark Antony. He shall not live. Look what a spot I damn him. But Lepidus, go you to Caesar's house and fetch the will hither. There shall we determine how to corrupt some charge and legacies. What shall I find with you? Or here, or at the capital. This is a slight unmeritable man, meant to be sent on errands. Is it fit the threefold world divided? She should be one of the three to share it? So you thought him and took his voice who should be pricked to die in his black sentence and prescription? Octavius, I've seen more days than you. And though we lay these honors on this man to ease ourselves of diverse slanderous loads, she'll but bear them as they pass bears gold to groan and sweat under business, either led or driven as we point the way. And after we have brought our treasure where we will, then take we down his load and turn him off like to the empty ass to graze in commons. You may do your will, but he is a tried and valiant soldier. So is my horse, Octavius, <laughs> and for that I do appoint for a vendor. It's a creature that I teach to fight, to whine, to stalk, to run directly on. And in some ways is lepidus, but so. Do not speak of them, but as a property. Now, Octavius, listen great things. Brutus and Cassius are levying powers. You must straight make heed. Therefore, their alliance may be combined, how covert matters may be deaths disclosed, and open perils, sure as cancer. Let us do so. For we are at stake and bait about with many enemies, and some that smiles have in their hearts, I fear. Millions of mischiefs. <laughs> <laughs> You wrong me every way, you 
involve me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. Peace, peace. You durst not so tempt him. I durst not? No. What, durst not tempt him? For your life, you durst not. Do not presume so much upon my love. I may do that I should be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. I did say to you for certain sums of gold, which you denied me. For I can raise no money by vile means. By heaven, I'd rather coin my heart and draw my blood for jocelyns than to wring from the hard hands of peasants through vile tracks by any indirection. I did send to you for gold to pay my allegiance, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius so? When Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to lock such rascal counters from his friends, be ready, God, with all your thunderbolts. Dash him to pieces! I denied you not. You did. I did not. She was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus hath the rise of my heart. Friend should bear his friend's infirmities. Brutus makes mine greater than they are. I do not, till you practice them on me. You love me not. I do not like your faults. Friendly, I can never see such faults. A flatterer could not with thee do appear as huge as high Olympus. Come, Antony! Now, Octavius, come! Revenge yourselves alone upon Cassius. Cassius is a weary of the world. Here is my dagger, here my naked breast, within a heart dearer than Pluto's mind, richer than gold. Thou beast of Roman, take it forth. I have denied thee gold, look at my heart. Strike, as thou didst at Caesar, for I do know when thou didst hate him worse, thou lovest him better than ever thou lovest Cassius. Sheath your dagger. Oh, Cassius, you are yoked with a lamb that carries anger at the flint bears fire, who, much in horse, shows a hasty spark, and straight is cold again. Cassius but lived to be a mirth and laughter to his brutus, when grief and blood ill-tempered vexed him. When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered too. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. In my heart too. Oh, brutus. What's the matter? Have you not love enough to bear with me when that rash humor which my mother gave me makes me Yes, Cassius. And from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, he'll think your mother chides and leave you so. Let me go in to see the generals. There is some threat between us. Did not leave me alone. Do not come to them. Nothing but death shall stay me. How now? What's the matter? For shame, you generals! What do you mean? Love and be friends as two such men should be. For I have seen more years, I'm sure, than ye. <laughs> How vilely doth this city rise! Get you hence, Sirrah, saucy fellow, hence! Brutus, bear with him, tis his fashion! And I'll know his humor, <laughs> he knows his time! What shall the wars do with these jigging fools? Companion, hence! Away, away, be gone! Colitis and Titanius, bid the commanders prepare to lodge the companies tonight. Uh, and come yourselves, and bring Vesala with you immediately to us. Lucius, a bowl of wine. <laughs> I did not think you could have been so angry. Oh, Cassius, I am sick of many griefs. Your philosophy you make no use if you give place for accidental evils. No man bears sorrow better. Portia is dead. Portia? She is dead. Oh, escape that killing cry across to yourself. Oh, insupportable and touching grief. Upon what sickness? Impatient of my absence and grief that the young Octavius with Mark Antony has made itself so strong. For with her death the tidings came. With this she fell distracted, and her attendant's absence swallowed fire. Died so? Even so. Oh, ye immortal gods! Speak no more of her. Lucius, give me a bowl of wine. In this I bury all unkindness, Cassius. My heart is thirsty for that noble pledge. Bail, Lucius, for the wine o'er swell the cup. I cannot drink too much of Brutus's love. Come in, Masala. Welcome, good Titanius. Now sit me close about this table here and call and question our necessities. Portia, art thou gone? No more, I pray you. Masala, I here received letters of young Ortevius with Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty power, bending their expedition toward Philippi. I saw the letters of the Celsian tenor. With what edition? That by prescription and bills to Athelie, Octavius, Antony, and Lepidus, imprisoned by the 107 of They are in our letters.
senators do not well agree. Mine speak of 70 senators that died by the prescription. Cicero being one. Cicero one? Cicero is dead. And by that one prescription. Have you your letters from your wife, my lord? No, Miss Lowell. Nothing in your letters written of her? Nothing, Miss Lowell. Nothing thinks it's strange. Well, I ask you, here on her ears. Now, as you are a Roman, tell me truth. Then, like a Roman, bear I the truth I tell, and certain she is dead. In my strange manner. Why, farewell, Georgia. You must die, Miss Olive. It's meditating that she must die once, but I have the patience to endure it now. Even so great my great losses, she endured. I have as much of this in art as you, but my nature could not bear it so. Well, to our work of life. What do you mean, the march of the be presently? I do not think it good. Your reasons? Is this is better that the enemy seek us? So shall he waste his means, weary his soldiers, do he himself offense, while to be lying still are full of rest, defense, and nimbleness. Good reasons must enforce to give place to better. <coughs> the people to Philippi and this ground, <coughs> you stand but in a forced affection, for they grudge us contribution. The enemy, marching along by them, by them shall make a fuller number up, come on fresh new added and courage. Which advantage shall we cut him off if at the lippy we do face him there? These people at our back. Then, with you will, go on, pull along ourselves, and meet them at the lippy. The deep of night has crept upon our talk, and nature must obey necessity. So, no more said? No more. None, my lord. Good night. Early tomorrow we will rise in hence. Lucius? Lucius? Mind down. <laughs> Anything? Nothing. My 
Our hopes are answered. You said the enemy would not come down but keep the hills and upper regions. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us at Philippi here, answering before we do demand of them. Pops, I am in their bosoms, and I know wherefore they do it. They could be content to visit other places and come down with fearful bravery, thinking by the space to fasten in our thoughts that they have courage. But tis not so. Prepare you, generals. The enemy comes on in a gallant show. Their bloody side of battle is hung out, and something to be done immediately. Octavius, lead your battle softly on upon the left hand of the field. Upon the right hand I, keep thou the left. Why do you cross me this exigent? I do not cross you, but I will do so. Mark Antony, shall we give sign of battle? No, Caesar. The general will have some words. Stir not until the signal. Words before blows, is it so, countrymen? Not that we love words better as you do. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. In your bad strokes, Brutus, you give good words. Witness the hole you made in Caesar, crying, Long live! Hail Caesar! Antony, the posture of your blows is yet unknown, but for your words, they rob the high blood bees and leave them honey. Not Stingless, too. Oh, yes, and soundless, too. For you have stolen their buzzing, Antony, and very wisely threat before you sting. Villains, you did not sow when your vile daggers hacked one another at the sides of Caesar. You showed your teeth like apes and fawned like hounds and bowed like bondmen, kissing Caesar's feet. Well, stand Casca, like a cur behind struck Caesar on the neck. Oh, you flatterers! The flatterers! Now, Brutus, state yourself. This tongue had not offended so today if Cassius might have ruled. Come, come, the cause of arguing make us sweat. Look, I draw a sword against conspirators, and think you that the sword goes up again? Never till Caesar's three and thirty wounds. Be well avenged, or till another Caesar hath added slaughter to the sword of traitor. Caesar, thou canst not die by traitor's hands, unless thou bringest them with thee. So I hope. I was not born to die on Brutus' sword. Oh, if thou wert the noblest, my strain. No man, thou canst not die more honorable. A peevish schoolboy, worthless of such an honor. Joined with a masker and a rebel. Old Cassius still! Come, Antony, away! Defiance, traitors, hurl me in your teeth! If you dare fight today, come to the field. If not, then you have stomachs. Well, now. Low winds, smell billow, and swim bark. The storm is up, and all is of a hazard. Oh, place, heart My lord? Miss Alla? Yes, my lord. Miss Alla, this is my birthday. This very day was Cassius born. Give me that hand, Miss Alla. Be thou my witness that against my will as Pompey was, my being held to set upon one battle all our liberties. Coming up from Sardis on our former end time here, two mighty eagles fell. There they perched, gorging and feeding from our soldiers' hands into Philippi here consorted us. This morning they are fled away and gone, and in their place do ravens, crows, and kites lie o'er our head and downward look at us as you are sickly prey. Your shadows seem a canopy most fatal under which our army lies, ready to give up the ghosts. Believe not so. But I believe in part of thee, for I am fresh of spirit and resolved to meet all perils very constantly. Even so, Clytus. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods today stand friendly that we may, lovers in peace, lead on our day to age. But, as the affairs of men rest still uncertain, let's reason with the worst that may fall. Then, if we do lose this battle, to the very last time we shall speak together. What are you determined then to do? So if we lose this battle, you are contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. Think not, thou noble Roman, that ever Brutus will go bound to Rome. He bears too great a mind. But this same day must end that work the eyes of March begun. And whether we shall meet again, I know not. Therefore, our everlasting farewell take. Forever and forever farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why then, this parting is well made. Forever and forever farewell, Brutus. If we meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, this truth's party was well made. Why then, lead on. Oh, that a man might know the end of this day's business ere it's come. 
But it applies it and the day will end, and then the end is known. But how? Oh, hey. Thank you. 
Please welcome to the ears of Brutus, Titus of this side. Hi, you Miss all, and I will seek for Pinhurst a lot. Why didst thou send me forth, brave Cassius? Did I not meet thy friends, and did they not put on my brow this wreath of victory and bid me give thee? Did thou not hear their shouts? Alas, thou hast misconstrued everything. But take this garland on thy brow, for Brutus bid me give thee, and I will do his bidding. Brutus, come and face and see how I regarded Caius Cassius. By you are these gods, this is a Roman's word. Come Cassius' sword, and find Titanius' heart. <laughs>
we two went to school together. Even for our love of old, I pretty you, hold in my sword hilt whilst I run on it. Oh, not in office for your friend, my lord. Fly, fly, my lord. There's no tarrying here. Farewell to you and you, and you, Volumnius. Strato, what has been all this while asleep? Farewell to you too, Strato. Night hangs upon mine eyes, and my bones of rest have labored but to attain this hour. Fly, my lord, fly. Hence I will follow. I pray thee, Strato. Stay thou by thy lord. Now, thou art a fellow of good respect. Let thy hap have some snatch of honor in it. Hold in my sword, and turn away thy face, whilst I do run upon it. Wilt thou, Strato? Give me your hand first. Fare thee well, my lord. Farewell, good Strato. <laughs> Um, Thank you. 
Speaking of this existing, we are we are just getting started registering for our summer session. We encourage you, if you know any young people who would be interested in doing this kind of work, sign them up because summer is a great time to get your feet wet, figure out if this is something you want to commit to the mountain that they just climbed. Um, so please spread the word. Uh, and then that brings us to the final thing, money. <laughs> yep. For, wait, what's the, I blinked on the line. For I can raise, I can raise no money by vile means. That's for right. I can raise no money by vile means. That's right. So since I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to resort to vile means, we need people to, uh, to donate to us. Uh -huh. um, we also are rebuilding our board. So if you are interested in board service, please talk to us afterwards because we would love to have you or if you know someone who is who values theater, who values Shakespeare, who values young people working in the arts, uh, have us get in touch, get, have them get in touch with us and we would love, it's a fun grassroots, no, no board retreats to Cancun, mm -hmm. but you get to get your hands dirty <laughs> and uh, know that your work is directly uh, mm -hmm. helping us continue this program. And that's all we have, oh, wait a minute, I almost forgot the most important thing. This is the first show of our season. Yesterday we opened Richard the Second and cast members for the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>